Last week, we went and did the live chart analysis on Bitcoin. And lo and behold, again, here's Mystic Meg with his crystal ball. It went exactly in the area that Andy identified. So we're going to carry on the analysis now live on the charts. We'll jump over to Bitcoin and let's see if you can be as accurate now. So earlier in the show, you said you think we're at a 50-50 crossroads as to where we go next. So yep. I'm interested as to why you're sat here saying that, because more often than not, you're pretty spot on with your prediction. So if you're saying that, this is going to be quite an interesting live chart analysis. So take it away, mm -hmm. Mr. Devil. Yeah, two seconds. Let's see if I can uh, make my uh, charts come down. He always does this. I talk, I give him time, and then he starts pressing his buttons. It's true. Fuck, you're so good at trading, mate. I do often do this. <laughs> so Nick is saying, feeling if we hit 36K Bitcoin, we'll have another final dump drop for 2021 to shake the market out at, ooh, big claim, at 19 to 28K and then break the all-time high. I wouldn't put it past the market, like Andy said earlier in the show, that is, look, more guys are buying in, more whales are coming in, we know that. So it's like, okay, and then there's another kind of more woo-woo theory about bad energies going out of the market and then new energies coming in because it's a revolution and all this sort of stuff. So there's so many interesting theories. Thank you for sharing yours. How much of that do you agree with? And let's find out why based on your chart analysis. Yeah, absolutely. So just just to kind of remind you of the areas that we spoke about last time we were, we were doing this, um, we were speaking about Bitcoin, um, you know, basically being around here and the potential, you know, it reached this 618 that we could, um, you know, go go towards this uh, 200 EMA and these uh, double purple lines that we drew in, which is old resistance becoming uh, support. And the market has done that. So it, it's it's had its initial drop. It's got here. It's reacted as I would expect. And now it's pushing up. Now, where next, I guess, is the, is the question. So right now, what's the easiest thing to predict? Well, because I, I, I can make um, a strong case for both. Um, and, and that's not because... Um, you know, the, the reality is, is that there comes a point in a market where you there's a decision that needs to be made. And sometimes it's going to be based on external influences. So we can make a case for both and we can be prepared for both. Uh, just incidentally, actually, this was a, um, a channel line that we did. We have closed below, which is quite interesting. So one thing to, to kind of look out for is to see what happens here if we close back in it um, or if we um, if we reject. And then, so today is a bounce. Tomorrow will be the interesting one. So if we get a push up and then reject and close below, that could be a sign for the next leg down. Now, um, because this is quite messy, I'm just gonna clean up a couple of little things here. So just to sort of make it a little bit easier to see. Um, but what, I wanted you to focus on here is is that this 50 EMA, um, you know, it's it has acted as support in the past. Um, I think we highlighted this last time. You can see here dynamic support for this uptrend on the 50 daily EMA, and we know it's um, it's important. Um, and then obviously off the back of this recent rally, guys, we went above the 50 EMA and um i don't know if that's a uh it's not a, we haven't actually come back to it until here where we bounced and then look that's where we are now so we are back below the 15 but we're kind of squeezed here between these two so it's a decision point that's what happens between the 50 and the 200 obviously we've had the cross up which is bullish if we do this from a, um, so I'm, I'm going to give you guys um, something specific to identify 
when the market may be going up. Um, and it's going to help you, I believe. But let's say if this market was to kind of maybe come up, reject and come here and start to push down. Well, we've already spoken about this. Um, this is where I would expect the market to go next um, around 36 and a half grand, which is the 1618, which is the Fibonacci target. And it is also a very, very strong old resistance that becomes support. But for those that really understand the fibs, um, let me just get rid of these lines. I just want to just to make sure you can see. If there's a massive correction, what happens is when you go against the trend, we often get that overextension. So those that have done the fibs before that understand them, they'll understand this, that the market could potentially go and hit this um, 200 extension, which would take you down to approximately about 33 in it, roughly. No, I think it's lower. Is it? Oh, it is 33. Yeah, about there, 33, which, yeah, that would that would take out quite a few people, I would say. Mm. That, could, that could be enough damage to take out. Because that's, you know, I don't mean it in a bad way, but that's kind of what you, the market needs. It needs to flush out the weak hands for it to go to where it needs to go. Um, so on that, on that note, you say that, why? Just clarify that for people. Like, why does it need to flush this, these people out? Well, I, I mean, the, the, the whales are the ones that move the market. So the, the big players are the ones that are going uh, to ultimately make the money. Um, and it's a game. Um, it's a game of chess in a way. And, um, you know, it, you can't have everybody winning. It's a zero sum game. So some people have to lose for others to win. It's just the nature of the game. So as part of the game, you know, what we're going to do, we're going to try and take out the weak hands. How are we going to do that? Well, we'll, uh, we'll create uh, a, a pattern that sucks people in and then takes them out um, because they get scared or, or for whatever reason. They can't hold their position and then they um then they're out of the game so it's a zero-sum game that that's just the reality it's, it's like every market so that's just how it works now that's kind of the the bearish scenario um where we push down to here and then if you see here i mean i i like this level you can see that it's got a lot of nice support around that thirty-three thousand. I think, is it possible to go lower? It is. I mean, if you really want to, I mean, if you really want to take out the market, you go, you potentially go back and test, um, you know, you, you go back and test this backside of the trend line, which is the, which is a very, very low extension down to 26 K that's possible as well. If you have a, a really, really bad, uh, you know, bad news comes out, everybody's despondent, you take out those lows and then you go. So all of these scenarios are possible. Now, the thing is, it's also, is it also possible for this market to now hold on its 200 like it has before and then go high? Absolutely, that's possible as well. So what I can say is that it was high probability to trade. I, I bought this, by the way, yesterday. Um, I traded it though, uh, just to put my hands up and I took my profit before I went to bed. So it's gone up higher since then, but that's part of the plan when I'm trading. But I, even if I was gonna hold this, I, I wouldn't be holding this beyond like this old, uh, old support, for example. I, I'm just literally looking for the bounce and then I'll let the market show me next where it's gonna go. So you, you make your money, you get out. Um, and, and again, if there's an opportunity to sell, I'll make my money and get out. That's just um, how to do it. Um, now, how do we know if it's ready to go up? So how do I know when to pile in? Well, if you keep 50% cash, 50% invested, um, or you could even do 50% invested in spot, um, 
maybe 40% cash and 10% in a trading account um, or whatever scenario, whatever ratios you like. Um, if you're confident with your trading, I'd probably make the 50% into 25-25. So 25 cash, 25% in a trading account and, and grow your trading account whilst the market's deciding. The, the, the best way that I kind of know um, as to when the market is going to go higher is by utilizing my market angles um, because that's that's proof that the buyers are in control um, so right now this is the best market angle that i've got it's a very reactive line um, and i would be tempted to kind of use this in this way where you say okay well we've got that kind of market angle now you could go for something a little bit flatter as well i mean we can we can certainly have a look to see because you can get a conservative entry so if you really want to kind of invest and you want a conservative entry you might want to go uh, and have a look to see if there's anything no, that's about the same there's not really yeah they're about the same um it looks like it's the right it's the right one let me just see uh, if there's anything else here that I should consider. Yeah, no, it's perfect. It's exactly what you want to see. Resistance becoming support, even reacts there. Um, so right now, yeah, that's if you're going to kind of get in long, I, like, and really kind of say, okay, we're now heading higher. I would be looking for a close, guys, above here. You take out the high, you take out the market angle. So something like this, let's draw it in. Holds on the 200, we take that high out and then we are looking to, to buy this. And I think if you end up in a scenario like here, there's a strong chance we're going higher. One thing I'm going to just check, guys. Um, I want to see where the 618 is of this whole move. Have we have we breached it or are we there? Yeah, we, we're, we're, we're not far off that, are we? I think we've we pretty much held there, didn't we? Look, there. It went slightly higher than the 618. Not quite here at our 70% level, but quite quite close. But yeah, that's the um, that's where it's held so far. So I think uh, you know taking out this high would really set us up for um, for a push to take out these highs. And I think at this point here is probably where you want to kind of put in like that twenty five percent that's sitting there and, and invest it across the board. So you've got so think of it like this: if you've got fifty percent cash. And it does go higher. It means your money's made more money anyway. And now, okay, yes, you're buying slightly higher prices, but even then, you could still wait for pullbacks and getting into your favourite coins and just add back in, knowing that likelihood is that we're going to now break these highs and you know make you a bit. And you can also use a little bit of margin if you feel confident. I mean, I personally would use margin at that point once I've got that confirmation. Let me just pause for a second, guys. Let's, uh, any any questions coming in? Any thoughts? Um, let me know, and I'm just going to check something out. Okay, guys. So, um, yeah, jump in if you've got any questions or comments just while Andy's figuring out his next part of the analysis. But hopefully that kind of gives you a bit more clarity on where things are right now. seems like we're all good nothing's coming in so you may proceed okay um i'm just gonna check something out yeah just i just loaded up a new chart okay so just before you do that um bruce yeah. is saying andy does it have to take liquidity at lower levels Um, 
does it uh what do you mean um specifically yeah i was what do you mean, well, does it have to take liquidity yeah so let us know just give us does a it, uh, yeah. on that. and then zach saying in short be prepared for both outcomes and that reactive line can determine where things can go correct yeah and most importantly um be prepared for so like on the on the bullish side great it means you make more money but on the bearish side that's more important because we need to make sure you're protected because you're going to make really good money from cryptos most likely anyway but the but in the short term you've got to make sure that your account isn't at risk um, that's the most important thing so making sure that if you said okay if that scenario is played out what if we did go to 20 odd thousand for example or 30 odd thousand would i survive that if i and and could i thrive in it potentially you could thrive right if you've got let's say that happened and you had 50 percent in cash that's like your 50 percent in cash is now halved so if you had 10 grand it's now five okay uh, so if you had 20 in total and 10 was invested so now it's five you've got five there and then you buy and then the market goes back to where it was now well you actually end up in a better position you end up making more by just it going back to where it was because you're now able to buy at much cheaper prices so in essence it's just about preparing for the downside is what i want you guys to focus on and trading to make um, extra income that you could invest.